Welcome Trailblazers, we're on our second park of the trip. We're here at SeaWorld San Antonio for a day for Lucy's first time ever here and my first visit after about five or six years. So Lucy, what are you most looking forward to for today? Uh, probably Texas Stingray. Texas Stingray? Yeah. Oh, for sure. So uh, do you think it's going to take Thunderhead's spot? Probably. Probably? Okay. Let's find out and let's go into the park. of this plot. Uh, if you watch some of his behavior, you'll notice that when certain flamingos approach him, uh, he will walk the other direction. Whereas um, there are two flamingos in here that when they approach him, he doesn't really pay them too much attention because that would be his parents. Sharks like to eat sea turtles, so they need this type of tooth to be able to bite through the shell and get to the uh, food on the, the inside. Also helps that they have an amazingly strong bite force, but uh, you know, it all works together. Thank you. All right. If you looked at that tooth, you notice it didn't have roots on it, like yours or my tooth. They're their teeth are not attached to their jaw the way some cars are, so they're constantly losing their teeth. 
the cat went between five and seven rows of teeth, and I'll show you that a little more clearly when we get upstairs. And as a result, they lose their primary tooth, the one behind it falls into position, et cetera, et cetera. So over the lifespan of the average shark, maybe 25 years, although we don't really know how long sharks live, um, they'll go through about 25 or 30,000 teeth. Nice. So they, our divers are constantly taking them up the habitat. They don't give them to me. I don't know what they do with them, but they're constantly taking them up. All right, we're going to step into the kitchen now. Alright, so this is one of many kitchens that we have here at Seawoo. This is the pairs all open for our cold blooded animals. So that would be, of course, all the fish here at Explorer's Reef, as well as the alligators over at Alligator Alley, the sea turtles over at Turtle Reef, the tortoises over at the tortoise, and then also the uh, stingrays over at King River. Our quad would go to 3,350 fish every day. They go a lot of our animals. Here, Imagine if we took this much coral off a live reef, we would do a lot of damage to that reef. So what our artists do is they sketch what they want the habitat to look like, they give it to our engineers, and then our engineers fabricate the coral. Right here, this guy right here. Yes. <laughs> 
the step right there. Slow-moving one with the pointed nose right here is a sand tiger shark. The rather faster-moving ones around are the uh, brown sharks, also known as sandbar sharks. Um, our nurse shark's actually been rather active today, so she's moved. And then we have two zebra sharks. The way you recognize the zebra sharks is that they have light-colored skin with spots. And somebody usually says, uh, Fred, zebras have stripes. Well, when they were born, they had stripes. But as they mature, they lose the uh, stars. Oh, hi. Hello. Hello. <laughs> <laughs> over here, we have two lemon rays. These are native to the Gulf of oh Mexico. These are true stingrays. But their barbs have been removed. Their barb is made of the same material as our fingernail. So we have to we clip them three or four times a year. <laughs> All right, so the way you'll touch them is take two fingers and then quickly reach down for them because they move rather fast. Okay. They can't sting, they can't bite. And just cross back? They just press back. Okay, good. Yeah. Oh, not that one, not that oh, one. Oh, that one? Okay. So if they're back here behind the rock, this is their safe zone. Okay, that's uh, fine. Okay. So we'll see if they come back out. But in yeah. the meantime, stingrays are, let's see if they reflect, or excuse me, well, reflect fluorescent in blue and green. Ooh. This is called biofluorescence. So this is different from bioluminescent, which requires a separate organism. Now, the, the reason that they look grainy is their skin is made of the same material as their teeth. It's called a dermal denticle, and it gives them a huge advantage in the water because it's a very low drag material. In fact, it's so effective. So, he's back out now, so you can go and reach down, try and touch him. Two nope. fingers. Nope. Get him, people. Drive by. Nope. Uh, yeah, we have quick. quick. In fact, the 2008 U.S. Olympic Swim Team commissioned Speedo, the swimsuit manufacturer, to make uh, swimsuits for the team based on the shark skin. Oh. It later was banned yeah. for the Olympics because it gave U.S. swimmers too much of an advantage in the water. All right, you guys aren't going to play? That's okay. All right, be that way. Just a little scared. Just a little scared. It's late in the afternoon. They've been touched all day. They're so this little lady over here is a white spotted bamboo shark. She is native to uh, northern Australia, Indonesia. And you can actually get better pictures from where I'm standing if you get on your way. The way to touch her, one at a time, two fingers, right with the second uh, brown stripe. So, <laughs> two sharks over here are new arrivals. The sharks have migration sensors along the sides of the body. These are called lateral lines. It picks up low frequency vibrations, giving them relative distance and direction to their prey. They also have electrical sensors in their nose. These are called anterior arms, even. And when you heartbeat, you give off electrical field, electrical pulse. When you twitch a muscle, you're giving off electrical field. And these little stingrays think they're so clever. I can bury myself in the sand. Nobody's going to see me. That's true. They won't be seen. But the shark's going to go over the first pass. Okay, there's something there. Second pass, I know exactly where it is. Third pass is lunch. So they don't have to see the the, uh, the uh, electro receptors are that uh, that good. Speaking of which, those sharks actually see much better than we do, especially in low light conditions. All right. So the bad news is sharks are responsible and very very bad year for the death of about 10 humans. On a very, very average year, humans are responsible for the death of millions and millions of sharks. 
Most of it's unnecessary. They uh, get caught in fishing tackle, fishing nets, discarded plastic bags, plastics, things like that. There are some fishing practices that are harmful to sharks. So our, our request is that when you go to the beach or you're anywhere in the water, please make sure that you bring out everything that you take in, or at least that you dispose of properly, so it doesn't end up in one of these, one of our friends, stomachs someplace. Now, over here closest to our stage, this two are. He is the younger of the two. Remember, he's 24 years old. And Kayuke. So right now, the whales have access to two different pools. Now, in total, our facility, we carry about four and a half million gallons of salt water. And we're divided into a couple of different pools that allow us to do different things. And our goal as trainers is to be very dynamic, to be very variable. So we're asking the whales to move into different pools all throughout the day and doing a variety of sessions like we were just talking about. Now, a little bit about their physical characteristics. So both of our gentlemen, they're 21 feet long. Now, the older of the two, Kai, you can remember he's weighing in at 9,600 pounds. Now, males are a lot larger than the females. We care for three, our largest is Takara. She's weighing in at 4,500 pounds. So boys are about double in size. Now, if you also take a look at that coloration, Killer whales, they're black on top, they're white on the bottom, and that's the form of camouflage that we call countershading. So if you were to look down, that dark back actually blends in with the depths of the ocean, and the light belly blends in with the light coming in from above, so it allows them to sneak up on whatever prey they might be pursuing out in the ocean. Now, killer whales are what we call apex predators, so they're at the top of the food chain, and they can eat virtually anything out there. Now you might even notice the dorsal fin, in particular with our two males. So the dorsal fin in their back can grow to be about six feet tall for an adult male. Now it's made entirely out of a dense fibrous connective tissue, very similar to what's in your nose and what's in our ears. Now our whales, they do spend quite a bit of time at the surface interacting with our trainers, maybe even their environmental enrichment devices, so we see gravity having an effect on that fin, and that's why you might start to see a lean. Now, right behind that dorsal fin, they have a little patch of gray. That is called their saddle patch. Now, the dorsal fin in their saddle patch, that's one way you can identify a killer whale. No two saddle patches, no two dorsal fins are the same. The dorsal fin, kind of think of it like a human thumbprint. Now, some very frequently asked questions we get all the time. How cold is this water? We keep it at about 52 degrees year-round, so pretty chilly. Now, with our training, we talked about, well, what happens when the whales get a behavior correct? They receive reinforcement, all the fun things like fish, low ice, back rubs, belly rubs, um, you name it. Now, the flip side to that, well, what happens when the whales are incorrect, when they do something wrong? Well, all we'll do as trainers, we'll stand there for a few moments, and then we move on. So training and learning is a very positive experience for all of our animals, like us. We make mistakes, and that's okay. What's most important is that the whales stay with us, they maintain a positive attitude, and then we just move on. So what we're going to do, we're just going to allow our two males to socialize, to do whatever they need to do, and then we might step up and ask the question. All right, Caillou, get to our, are y'all ready to participate? And they'll let us know. They have a choice, yes or no, both options are okay. So we're just waiting for that opportunity to to ask, and hopefully we can resume the rest of our presentation. But that allows me the opportunity to talk to all of you, which is very exciting, because this is, this is not something that happens very regularly. Now, if you were interested at all today, you came on a very special day, it's Inside Look. So not too often do we open up our behind the scenes area, but to, you have the opportunity to see that. So right after this presentation at two o'clock, We'll be opening up behind the scenes and you can come see what all that entails, the different sessions that we have with the whales. And this is my supervisor, Amy, who's going to take over. Hi, everyone. Thank you so much for your patience, you guys. As you can see, the boys here, Kayuka and two are, who are half-brothers, in case Jacob didn't mention that, are just doing their own thing right now. That's perfectly fine. That's how we train the animals here at SeaWorld all on their own. So right now, whatever's going on socially with them, we're gonna let happen. So 
unfortunately, I am the bearer of bad news, and I'm going to tell you that we are going to cancel this presentation at this moment. However, like Jacob said, we do have inside look that only happens two or three times a year, and that first one starts at 2 o'clock today. And it's going to be behind the scenes. You'll enter from the far side of the team over there, and then, so that'll happen at 2 o'clock and 3 o'clock, and then we have another presentation. Cross your fingers for that one. Sorry, 4.30 today. Thank you guys so much for your patience. We have some trainers here to answer your questions, but also make sure you head back to Inside Look at 2 o'clock. Thanks, guys. So despite it being January, the water rides at SeaWorld San Antonio are still open. Uh, that is without, of course, Journey to Atlantis and Catapult Falls still is not open. That was a pretty big letdown, but what's an even bigger letdown is that Texas Stingray has been down for maintenance all day and there's no signs of it opening, even though we are at the end of our visit. All right, so we just spent an entire day here at SeaWorld San Antonio. So we did Wave Breaker, Steel Eel, Great White, and what else did we do? Oh, Tidal Surge? Yeah. And that's about that's it, That's really, really. We, did, we did the flat so, rides, but like. So Texas Stingray was down all day, which is kind of a bummer. Uh, Great White was Lucy's third Batman clone for a b &M invert. So yeah. how did this one stack up compared to the others? It just felt like the others. I don't. I didn't like this one as much. It didn't feel like it did it, did, did it all. It didn't have the forces that yeah. the other ones do, especially Goliath. Goliath is yeah. still Goliath top. is my favorite Batman clone. 
of the Batman clones. Yes. Now we have yet to go over to over Georgia, which apparently they have the better version. We'll still have to figure that one out later on in the year. Um, Steel Eel, the Morgan Hyper Light. So that was Lucy's second ever Morgan coaster. This was, I've already been on this. I've been to this park a bunch of years ago. So this is really nice to come back and do it all over again. Lucy, how did it stack up against Mamba, the only other Morgan you've done? I like Mamba more, I think. Mamba is a very, is, is the stronger ride, of course. Mm -hmm. um, this isn't the full 200 feet, which is kind of, kind of sad. Yeah, I didn't feel like it very, came very, none of these rides came very far off the ground. <laughs> uh, Wavebreaker, fantastic family coaster. It was fun. Ladies um, and gentlemen, SeaWorld is now closing. Rude! We hope that you have enjoyed your visit. <laughs> That's going to be the thing for this Thank trip, you. I got to Rude! Good night. <laughs> that and the, the, the chair. SeaWorld, the chair. The chair. Or that. Okay. Slay. <laughs> so back to it. Um, Total Surge. Scream and Swings are your favorite flat ride. How well, did this one stack up? Here, I love Total Surge. It was my favorite Scream and Swing, but Scream and Swings are not my favorite flat rides anymore. So you're still leaning towards the Zamparelli Giga Discoveries? Yes. So uh, we have Serengeti Flyer, Barn Swing, Tidal Surge, the both uh, the two hot seats back in Florida uh, for Scream and Swing. So this one is still your favorite. Yeah, don't we have the one at Dollywood? Oh yeah, Smart Stormer. Yep, yeah. we did that one too. <laughs> so yeah, unfortunately we didn't get to do Texas Stingray this trip. We might be able to come back. I don't think we will this year until Catapult Falls opens because that is another thing that well, we missed out on. We should try and come back when we come back in June just so we. Can some more animal exhibits. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, so like we already showed, yeah. we did do the yeah, shark encounter, uh, the shark exhibit. We I'm, saw the canceled sea, uh, the canceled yeah. orca show. Yes, that was a big letdown. Yeah. Uh, really, the shark experience, I was kind of underwhelmed. Right? Like, that, I know, I, I know it's only $20, but like, it still felt underwhelming. Like, it felt like we were promised more. Yeah, it, there, there's a lot more promise, and like, we thank the staff so much for like trying to get us in as much as possible and they're like oh we're gonna do this 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 yeah we did all of it except they made it sound so much better not to mention like that's nothing like again nothing against staff they were very no. accommodating with the wheelchair and they waited for me it was very it was a very accommodating experience it was very fun mm -hmm. but it there should have been more now the shark experience like you saw it's really just looking at the top of the tanks and seeing two animals that are normally in regular aquarium touch tanks yeah I wouldn't pay for it again. Mm -mm. I mean, and we are platinum holders, so of course we'll get to do it for free next time. But if we had to choose, we would probably choose a different exhibit. Right, and just see what they're like. But like, if they're all the exhibits are like there, is it really worth that benefit? I think it's just an extra. Benefit. Yeah, it's just an extra benefit. But like, it's it's not worth it to go out of the way and take time against doing rides or doing other stuff. That's and a 30 minute thing that we could be doing something else. Especially whenever the exhibit's on the opposite end outside of the park. Like you have to come all the way back in. And you have to go through the whole ticketing process every single time you want to go see either the dolphins or the sharks because they're on the yeah, outside of the regular theme park, which doesn't make sense. Overall, I say Zero San Antonio has a lot of work to be it's done. Right. However, for it being the first SeaWorld park to have any kind of roller coasters or thrill rides, I feel like it's getting left out with SeaWorld San Diego getting Emperor and SeaWorld Orlando getting all of the love. Mm -hmm. Even the Biscards parks are getting more love than the original park that had the original rides. Like I understand those ones are probably a little bit bigger, but like this one, there's still a lot of space to put some stuff. Absolutely. There's so much dead space mm -hmm. and I couldn't even imagine the area without Texas Stingray or Tidal Surge. Ladies it was just so empty. SeaWorld It'd just be an aquarium. Awesome. It feels, it feels like you're, you it's an aquarium at a fair. And we'll Pretty much. So and while we're being night. rudely interrupted once again, we Senora are the Trailblazers. Rude! <laughs> we're going to be signing off and we'll see you guys on the next trip. Bye! Bye!